Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. Um, yeah, happy Sunday. And uh, it's been uh, quite quite a week for me as well. Um, yeah, we just completed a pastor summit, and it's been uh, quite uh, quite transformative. I'll share a little bit more about that during the sermon. So last week, I shared about the nature of a mother's love, and we took some time to appreciate all the moms. It was Mother's Day. And one, uh, one reflection that I received after giving the sermon was that, you know, how about people who uh, didn't have a good childhood? Uh, maybe they didn't experience the kind of uh, unconditional love from their, for, from their parents or from their mom. And I must say that, you know, no one has had a perfect childhood and many moms feel like they didn't do enough uh, because um, for their children, even, even dads. But we appreciate our moms because they gave all the love that they had despite not having received perfect love themselves. And also despite us not always loving them back. And that's kind of how God has loved us as well. How God continues to love us regardless of whether we return that love. So just a shout out again to all the moms. Uh, happy Mother's Day last week. and. Uh, this week, um, yeah, one, one mother that I have come to truly appreciate is Mother Moon. She's actually kind of like a godmother to me because she helped arrange my parents in marriage. Uh, so in fact, I wouldn't exist if it weren't for Father and Mother Moon. Interestingly enough, you also helped arrange my union with my wife, which was a prerequisite to having my family. So in one sense, she has given me both Father and Mother Moon. They have given me my life, my wife, and my family, all of which are very important to me. The amazing thing is uh, Mother Moon together with Father Moon has been a godmother to uh, and Godfather to so many other people. And that's why they refer to them as, uh, as their true parents. Uh, they helped arrange many couples through the marriage blessing and provided the guidance and love to raise beautiful families. Today, I wanted to share about what it truly means to be a blessed family and how we can be proud of that identity. So the title sermon title for today is Being Blessed and Proud. So what does it mean to be a blessed family? Well, a blessed family starts with a couple. And technically, when you receive the marriage blessing and you go through the whole 43-day process, uh, to reverse the curse and restore your love relationship centered on God, then you become an official blessed couple. Recently, there was a testimony given by a clergy, uh, clergy member. Uh, it was Apostle Glenda Lee Phillips. We had a two-day pastor summit in New York at the beautiful East Garden. And she was sharing how through going through that process of 40 nights of preparation and separation and three nights of renewing that love relationship, that she felt transformed in her, her love relationship with her husband, uh, really felt God's presence much more acutely in that relationship and their, their marriage has become something with a higher purpose beyond just their own happiness. And I was really moved by her testimony. And I felt like this is something that's so precious that we want to really share with as many couples as possible so that they too can experience the joy and benefit of being a blessed family. So on that foundation, when a blessed couple goes through that process, and when you have any physical or spiritual children, then you become a blessed family. Or in my case, 
I was born into a blessed family as a blessed child because my parents had gone through that process. And uh, so I'm part, as a blessed child, I'm part of my parents' blessed family. But when I go through and get blessed myself um, in marriage and have my own children, then I also become my own blessed family. Uh, kind of an extension of my parents' blessed family, but I also create my own blessed family uh, when I have children. So let's look a little bit deeper into what it means to be a blessed family. Let's read. Blessed families are to accomplish the standard that Adam and Eve failed to attain. They should connect with God's love at their center. You should have absolute devotion to and absolute love for one another. You should become one rooted in such love and become a center of harmony. So this is interesting. This is from, I believe, Father Moon. He says that a blessed families are to accomplish a standard that Adam and Eve could not attain. What does that mean? Uh, well, as we shared earlier, um, or those who are familiar with the Bible, there's a story with Adam and Eve, our first ancestors, who uh, disobeyed God and committed an illicit sexual or premature relationship, uh, sexual relationship, which caused them to separate from uh, in heart and in love with God. And so a blessed couple is supposed to do the opposite of that, actually, to, to reverse what happened by centering their love on God and on their spirit and also on each other. Also, Father Moon says here that God needs to be the center of that love. That they should connect with God's love at their center. So this is interesting. What does it mean to have God's love at the center? Well, if you think about it, you know, when, when if you're if you're married and when you're in you're engaging in uh, intimacy with each other, do you include or invite God into that experience? Right. As blessed couples, as blessed families, that's really the guidance that Father Moon is giving us that we want to always keep God at the center of all our love relationships. And it says here, you should have absolute devotion to and absolute love for one another and become one in harmony. So it's not just our love for God, but uh, re-emphasizing that really as a blessed family, we're meant to give our absolute devotion and love to each other as um, husband and wife. Okay, and we're going to go a little bit deeper still. Let's read. The marriage blessing offers the grace of being grafted onto the true olive tree. It was inaugurated through the true parents who bring God's true lineage to humankind. Once you receive the true parents' marriage blessing, you can give birth to pure, sinless offspring and build an ideal family. Okay, so I don't know about you, but for me, the part that stood out was this pure, sinless offering. Uh, and if you understand the theology, it, it also explains that, um, that once you, you have received the blessing, go through the 43 days, you're able to give birth to blessed children who are free of original sin. Whoa. What does that mean? Uh, this is something that uh, I've had to process my whole life trying to figure out what does it mean to be free of original sin. Uh, it's obvious to me and many parents by now that it doesn't mean that we don't make any mistakes or we don't commit any sin. So what does it mean to be free of original sin? Well, uh, in order to address that, we need to go back to, well, what is original sin? What was the first sin that was committed at the Garden of Eden? How was original sin introduced? The simple answer is that uh, it was disobedience, right? Adam and Eve, well, God gave the commandment to Adam and Eve not to eat of the fruit uh, of the knowledge of good and evil, right? Um, but starting with Eve, she disobeyed that commandment and was tempted into a relationship 
uh, prematurely, or in this case, first with the archangel, that was just wrong. And then with Adam, it was premature. So it wasn't just disobedience. What introduced the original sin, it started with the disobedience, but what, what solidified that sin was that they engaged in godless, self-centered, physically driven love. That was what solidified and kind of made Adam and Eve inherit this nature of disobeying God, not including God in relationships, you know, seeking their self, self-pleasure, over thinking about the other and really being tempted physically then rather than thinking about what is right, what is supposed to be. And since that time, if you basically humanity has inherited that same self-centered love that we see throughout history and even till this day. So that was the source, the origin of this original sin. So what does it mean to be free of that original sin? Well, if you were to reverse that, you need to practice obedience to God, include God in your love relations, be selfless in your love relationships, and seek the spiritual internal connection and union with your, with your husband or wife primarily over the physical uh, attraction and drive. Again, all this is, is, may seem conceptual, but if you really start to de- define and understand what is this original sin that was committed by Adam and Eve and that we still all have, uh, then we can start to understand how we can uh, reverse it. So all those who receive the blessing uh, from, from, from Father and Mother Moon, they, they understand the concept, but they also go through uh, the whole blessing ceremony. They receive the holy wine. There's a lot of symbolism there. I won't go into it in detail. I, I kind of covered it in a previous sermon. But this 43-day process is really a process of purification. 40 days of being separate and really loving your spouse non-sexually, and then the three nights really restoring, uh, reversing exactly what happened at the time of the fall. So, you know, any children that are born of this kind of union between a husband and wife that really went through this process of reversing and, again, obeying God over their own concepts, um, really inviting God into that love relationship, seeking to really um, please the other and keeping the spirit at the center of that relationship. The children who are born after that kind of uh, conditional restoration um, can be claimed by God as God's children. Hence, they are free of original sin. They are free of that original uh, mistake or intention, the false intention that Adam and Eve had at the beginning of their first love relationship. So that's what it means to be blessed children. Uh, doesn't mean that we're perfect. It means that we were born with that kind of condition or on that foundation of our parents having reversed the curse. And we're born with that now potential. God can now claim us directly as, um, as his children. Uh, and we, we stand in a position as Adam and Eve were before they fell. Okay, but keep in mind, Adam and Eve were also free of original sin, but they still uh, made a mistake, right? So that means that we're not... Um, it's not a you know guarantee. It's no get out of free, get out of jail free card. Um, it just means that we have that original claim. God can claim us as His children, and naturally, if we have blessed parents, then it should help us, give us a better chance of overcoming temptation and challenges, and really grow to also create our own blessed families. 
So that's what it means that the, our core identity is as God's children, not as Satan's children. And that we are also part of uh, the family that God originally intended from the very beginning. Now here's maybe a new, not a new, but a, a clincher, I want to say. The thing is, once you receive the blessing, those who receive it, including first generation, are also, according to principle, free of that original sin. That's right. Not just blessed children, but first generation unificationists who receive the blessing, they also, through that process, become free of original sin. Means God can claim you. God claims you as his children. But we still have personal sin to deal with. We have collective sin, hereditary sin. We have all kinds of things we have to deal with. But at the very least, the foundation root, being free of original sin, means God can claim that couple, that child, that family as God's. Okay, so that's what it means uh, to really be a blessed family. Okay, sounds great. Um, so what does that look like in practice? Um, I believe that, you know, the 43 day is the beginning point. It helps us to really uh, understand the essence and kind of start anew with God. But really being a blessed family is, it means that we need to continue to be committed to God's ideal. So it's not just like, okay, I'm blessed, I'm done. I'm part of God's lineage. Um, I got my ticket to heaven. No, it's not like that. It definitely is a, is a cleansing and a purification and a, a new starting point. But what it truly means to be a blessed family it's not just that God can claim you, but that you are really continuing to build God's dream, committed to that ideal, regardless of the challenges that come in the way. So um, this is really important because uh, I think many of us uh, who have received the blessing, uh, I think initially we may have been feel like on cloud nine or that we've, we've made it, you know, we've set so much preparation, but also many of us face challenges on the way, made mistakes or um, even, you know, our own parents may have, uh, have, have went against us or persecuted us. Um, but to be able to overcome all that and stay true to this ideal, regardless of our limitations, that's what it really means to be a blessed family. Yeah, I think mm, Yeah, even in my case, um, I have uh, five siblings. And, um, you know, I grew up as a blessed child. Uh, it was a very strict household and we got up early uh, to do morning devotion and prayer and pledge. Ever since I was a child, I remember every Sunday we would get up at 5 a.m. and uh, really um, uphold this kind of standard as a, a blessed family. You know, what it means to have God at the center of your life. But, you know, there's the ideal and there's, you know, there's reality. Um, among my siblings so far, you know, I'm the only one that has received the blessing. I'm already 42. Um, so, you know, there's still all my siblings, my family, they're all blessed children, but doesn't mean that everyone goes the same course, right? Uh, there's the nature and nurture, there's, there's the foundation, but each person has their own portion of responsibility. Um, and so we can't dictate how everyone lives their lives. However, um, it's really important that 
you know, despite what other people do, what you commit to do in your life, um, that's what really makes a difference. And the more you can understand and strive towards that, uh, that can give courage to others as well. Let's, um, yeah, let's continue here. Um, so, yeah, let's read here. This is also from Father Moon. The way for a husband and wife to unite is by valuing God's central purpose and fulfilling the purpose for which this universe came into existence. The husband and wife communicate with each other based on heart, love, and personal character walking the same path. So this is, again, what it means to be a blessed family. And the essence in this passage is that the marriage is centered on, you know, God's central purpose. What does that mean? So a blessed family, God-centered purpose means, you know, God created everything in pairs. God actually wants, uh, designed human beings to marry um, and to be united as one for the sake of reflecting God's nature, experiencing joy, and bringing joy back to God. So keeping that in mind as God, that this marriage, this blessing of marriage is what is as how God wanted and intended. That's really important to, to, to understand what it means to be a blessed couple. And then it says here, this last sentence really caught my attention. It says walking the same path. Husband and wife communicate with each other based on heart, love, and personal character, walking the same path. And when I reflected on my life, I was like, hmm, well, yeah, my wife and I, we're not always on the same page. We have differences in opinion and uh, we have different career paths. So what does it mean walking the same path? You know, we're a blessed couple, but are we walking the same path? And as I was reflecting on it, I, I realized that, you know, despite our differences, our, our understanding even of our, our faith, uh, our background, our, our career path, our, our level of engagement with our church community, you know, we're very different. But the blessing is what brought us together in a common journey as a couple. One flesh and you know, growing into one heart. We've spent more time together than we have with anyone else. And despite our differences in opinion, I feel like we know each other better than anyone else does, more than our parents, more than our children. We've been the sole witness to each other in our lives. So in one sense, the blessing and that commitment to that unit that unity of staying together centered on that original plan and dream as a, as husband and wife, that has brought our union together into one path. And I think that's what God intended from the beginning for all of us to be united, to grow through that journey with our husband, with our wife, and through that mature our hearts to become more reflective of God's love. And definitely I've, you know, I've learned from her. She's learned from me. Um, we've definitely rubbed off on each other, <laughs> both good and bad, to, to help us to become more, more mature in heart and in love. So, yeah, I want to emphasize here that the 43-day process to complete that original blessing is just the beginning. Walking that path together requires a lot of effort, but that, that also contributes to the growth and maturation as well. Let's continue to read. To really love the world, you first have to love people. To really love people, you first have to love your spouse. A man must love a woman, and a woman must love a man. That is a couple, husband and wife. 
Those who are bonded as a husband and wife will be able to love the world with the heart of love they have for their spouse. Let's continue. Therefore, the family is the standard for the formation of a nation. It is a standard for the whole world. For this reason, the Unification Church advocates a worldview centered on heaven's family. So yeah, in, in our community, we're really big on family. And the point is, is that it starts with the couple really loving each other centered on God's will. When, when a man is able to love a, a woman, a woman loving a man in that kind of eternal union, then that becomes a foundation for uh, a God-centered family and a community, nation, and ultimately world. Uh, you know, one time I remember going to a, a, a conference in Korea. It was called Global Top Gun Youth. We had about, I think we had 800 young people, like between the ages of 18 and, and 35, uh, in a conference center from, I believe it was like over 45 different countries. We spoke different languages. And so we literally had to have simultaneous translation in seven languages uh, for all our programs. And it was insane. It was crazy. We could barely communicate with each other. Our teams had people from different nations as one team. So it was so challenging to, to be part of that experience. But then over the three weeks that we were together, it was so beautiful to see that despite the limitation in language, because we had the same vision for our future of, of peace and family um, and seeing each other as brothers and sisters, we were able to overcome those limitations of language and culture and through the central culture of heart, come to love, respect, and serve each other. And it was beautiful to experience and see that. That gave me hope for really what world, that world peace was possible. That when you have young people from all different nations really centered on common values and vision, being able to overcome challenges to come together in heart, I felt like this is exactly what God wants to see. God wants to see a world full of individuals, of couples, of families that can overcome their differences and love each other as God would want us to. So I wanna wrap up with some benefits of being a blessed families. It, it does require a lot of effort and some condition, but there are some cool benefits. Um, I think for me, uh, the number one thing is just having a vision, uh, a clear purpose and framework for your life and your marriage. Um, from a very young age, because I, I was taught the principle, I had a very clear idea of what I wanted for my future. Um, so I, I was less prone to distraction or temptation because I knew this is what God wanted for me and my family. That's what I'm going to prepare for. So that clarity of vision can give hope in a society and world where most of the young people these days, they don't believe or they can't believe in lasting love. Many of them don't even want to marry because there's so much divorce. There's so much conflict. It's like, what's the point of trying if there's no way of actually reaching that kind of love? But through the principle, through this blessing culture, I feel it can give tremendous hope to the youth that love is possible, that marriage is possible, that marriage and lasting love is actually possible. It can give hope uh, for marriage for the young people. Let's read here, a man and woman who are united in mind and body and who have the basis in their relationship that allows God's love to be with them are to receive the blessing and marry. In doing so, they will explode for the first time with the power of an earthquake. Love is established at the same time that heaven and earth vibrate. So the, the key point that kind of stood out here is that 
uh, when when two individuals who have really prepared themselves in heart, this is for you know the singles who grew up in the movement, when they with that kind of purity commit to having that that love relationship centered on God, it is amazing. You know, it's like the first love experience, but also on the foundation of a, a pure heart, not not having had uh, other experiences prematurely. And those who go through um, the blessing of marriage as already a couple, they go through that 40 day preparation, 40 day separation to also purify their hearts so that they can also relate and experience in those three, three nights, uh, a renewal, uh, kind of a rebirth experience centered on God centered love. So yeah, that kind of love experience is, is super powerful. So that's one benefit. The other thing related to that is the kind of trust and security that we have in blessed couples is very different from what most people experience in other relationships. Because we commit to an eternal relationship, there's a much higher level of trust and security that comes with blessed families. And you can ask any blessed family it, from what they've experienced before the blessing and afterwards when they came into our community, it's like night and day in terms of the level of trust that they have with their spouse. Um, so in, uh, one more thing I'd like to say as a, uh, the benefit of the blessing is that uh, in the Mother of Peace, there's actually many passages. Um, won't go into all of them now, but um, in, in one of the quotes, Mother, Mother Moon shares about how millions were blessed. Uh, and through this, the blessing is not just for uh, the happiness of the couples, but this can give hope for a peaceful world. And that's the beauty of the bless blessing. It's not just about including God in your relationship and having uh, an amazing trust and love relationship, but this is actually can contribute to a peaceful world. So uh, how can we share this with others? Let's see. The blessing you receive by meeting the true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind should not remain only in your family. You are the ones who can display your pride in the blessing in front of the 7 billion people on the earth. Please remember that with every blessing comes responsibility. Um, yeah, it reminds me of all the superpower, I mean, superhero movies, right? With superpowers comes super responsibilities. So we receive such uh, a blessing, receiving the blessing. Let's not keep it to ourselves and let's take the responsibility to share that with others. Also to live up to and continue to strive towards the ideal of the blessing in our family and also sharing that vision with others. The Unification Church has a clear viewpoint. We build the kingdom of heaven of heart in our own families, in our family life, and expand it to the environment through our own efforts. God wanted to build an eternally blessed paradise so that he could dwell on earth. In our generation, we have to build what God intended together with him and offer it to him. So this is also a distinct uh, aspect of our community is that we are committed to building God's kingdom here on earth now, it's not about waiting till you die and go to heaven and you wait for the kingdom of heaven in, in the spirit realm. It's about, you know, this is what God wanted to create here on earth. And if we don't create peace on earth, we can't really create that in, in heaven either. What is loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So we are all committed to building the kingdom. Um, and that requires each of us to, to make that effort. And I'd like to end with this last quote, uh, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8 through 10. I really love uh, these verses from Jesus um, because it really reflects, you know, um, many times our situation where uh, we've been tasked to be pure of heart. We've been tasked to be peacemakers. And many times uh, we've been persecuted because of our difference in, in approach, our difference in perspective. 
But, you know, Jesus says that blessed are those who are persecuted because of their righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I believe that in our journey of sharing the blessing, we may be misunderstood, we may face challenges, but this is a new era. And I feel that a lot of that foundation has been laid. And this is a time over the next seven years where we're really going to grow. And a big part of that is we need to overcome our own fears and, and really gain confidence in who we are as blessed families and find that pride, find that joy. And through that, feel confident to share that with everyone. So uh, the secret to feeling truly blessed uh, I know we're running a little bit over, so I'm going to wrap it up quickly here. Um, stop feeling so guilty. <laughs> God already claimed you as his children through the blessing. And instead of feeling guilty for what we haven't done, let's be grateful for what we've already received. Let's be grateful for what God has given us and for this opportunity to build the kingdom together. Okay, so the secret to feeling truly blessed is let go of the guilt. Let's focus on the gratitude instead. Okay, the grace and gratitude of what we received. We don't have to be perfect. We know we're not perfect, but let's work together to build the kingdom. So in conclusion, let's be truly grateful to be a blessed family. Let us be confident in our identity as blessed families. Let us be proud of the foundation that we stand on, of all those that came before us. And let us share this blessing with our extended family and friends. There's no better way to do this than to invite people over to a, your own watch party or join a watch party on June 5th. And it's coming up in three weeks to celebrate the beauty of the blessing with our family members worldwide. Uh, as you know, um, this is the newest uh, flyer that we have. It's a postcard now. Uh, make sure that you, uh, if you haven't done so already, invite your friends and you can go to Peace Starts With Me to register. And we're gonna have a great event. Uh, I really wanted to share this message today to really give, uh, share a little bit of more confidence and hope that really what we have is amazing. And this June 5th event is going to be all about celebrating uh, the blessing. So I want you to have confidence. Please invite everyone and let's celebrate together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.